again. Good morning, everybody. Uh, hey, good. Huh? It's great to see you back this year at the Singapore FinTech Festival 2017, who have been here last, week, uh, last year. And actually, for those of you who came uh, first time, thanks for joining, many the travel, and make this such an amazing and interesting event. My name is Michael Gorris. I'm the CIO Chief Information Officer of Standard Chartered. Let's just start with the first one. What is Standard Chartered? Standard Chartered is a bank. Um, it has been founded actually 164 years ago. It's operating in more than, uh, actually precisely in 68 countries. We have about 80,000 people working for us. And predominantly, we are working in the region, uh, Asia, Middle East, and Africa. We have been awarded uh, several times, best digital bank in some regions, in countries. So this is where we are today. Listed in New York Stock Exchange, listed in India, listed in Hong Kong, as one of the most prestigious banks in the world. Well, this was the past. But what's going to happen in the future? We are one of the larger banks. The question is whether the banks will survive in the last 100, 150 years. We just heard in the plenum that there are some questions about it. Banking definitely will succeed, but the question is whether the banks are still there. In order to answer this question, let's have a look a little bit in the history. So, whom of you would know what this is? Italiani, andiamo. Okay, this is Monte Pasco di Siena. This is the oldest standing bank in the world. As a matter of fact, this has been founded in 1472, and it exists for more than 500 years. Well, still exists. Let's see what happens. That's where banking has started, by and large. So it has been around for quite a while. And banking is very easy. It started there, and it still is, for essential services. It's storing the money, it's transferring the money, it's actually lending money, and give opportunity for investment. That's all what banking is. When we think back, it has been around for that for a long time. There was one change, and this was about 50 years ago. 50 years ago, the computers were invented, the big mainframes. And what we did there in banking, we put our back offices, we put our ledgers into these mainframes and just optimized the internal processes in banking. What hasn't changed was the outside of the banking. Branches still continue to exist, relationship managers, all these kind of artifacts which you are used from banking still went on uh, being in existence. But then, five years ago, that was the decisive milestone in banking. Five years ago, by and large, we can say that the mobile phone, the smartphone, became pervasive. This is me in Shanghai, actually in the wet market, buying two oranges. The two oranges at the price of one yuan. I'm not sure whether this was the right price, but that's what I paid for it. Actually, I did pay for it, but I didn't pay with cash. I did pay with WeChat Pay. So you see me here scanning a barcode, and I typed in the, uh, the amount, and the money was transferred instantly, totally cashless. That's where banking is going to. We have, the smartphone has actually fully, absolutely changed the way banking is uh, going to be in the future. Banking will be fully digital, the customer expectation is that within five seconds your transaction is fulfilled and that the whole experience is very convenient and seamless. That's exactly what it is. So will the banking industry be able to break this barrier from a traditional banking system into this new world of all digital? So talking about barriers, let's look into a comparison. And this is my famous theory. It's called the egg theory. So let's think about this barrier is the shell of an egg. There are two ways in an egg how the shell is broken. You can either break it from the inside or you break it from the outside. 
if you break it from the inside, so by this little fledgling, it brings life, it brings prosperity to the content of the egg. If you break it from the outside, actually, you end up being pan fried. Standard Chartered actually decided to be on the inside out camp. And we decided three years ago to put a significant amount of money in the digitization of our bank. We put three billion aside for the next three years to put in the digitization of our bank. We wanted to be, and we are striving for, being the digital bank with the human touch, combining traditional banking with the notion and the idea of a digital bank. Well, putting money at it, throwing money at it, is not solving the problem immediately. There's much more to it. And therefore, we started a major cultural program within the bank. We did install an artifact which we call the Accelerator. The Accelerator is our innovation lab where we search for the solutions to the various challenges we have along the way. The Accelerator Lab is an entity where people are um, guided by uh, moderators trained in human-centric design to look at the solutions and find uh, look at the problems and find the solutions uh, looking from the outside in. We always start with a customer perspective and then derive the way into the solution into the back end. This accelerator has been established in 2016 here in Singapore. We, have been, we are now in the process of extending it to Hong Kong and other countries. But this is only the beginning of the solution finding. In the IT department itself, we have installed Agile methodology. At the moment, what you see here, uh, this is our modern workplaces. We have about a thousand workplaces already equipped in Singapore and Bangalore and are revamping all of our uh, creation spaces into these uh, Agile facilities. The landscape itself we fully embrace the API journey, meaning that we put APIs around our legacy systems and all the new systems and services coming in have to be API'd in, with RESTful APIs, speaking JSON, or otherwise they don't come through the door. To make the compute available, we are fully embarked on the cloud journey and putting system by system into infrastructure as, as a service or use software as a service for compute purposes, um, for services which are available. Last but not least, we are collecting all the data which are currently stored and generated by the TP systems and put them into one central data lake from which analytics and all kind of data um, science is driven by. By this, we, for example, source all the data for our regular reporting from this one central data lake and at the same time we use it for real-time marketing purposes in, for example, retail banking. But this is only the things which we do internally. We actually have actively reached out to the community, to some of you guys and to the fintech world by and large and are scouting for the best solutions out there. This year, for example, we have been looked at 900 uh, fintech solutions out there. We engaged with 90 of them in at least one of discussion. Some of them made the cut and we, uh, we, we were working with 20 of them in uh, proof of concepts, actually proof of concepts which we are paying for. And five of these uh, companies um, have resulted in an operational, operational environment, so they are live in an action working in our day-to-day -day business. Companies like this um, are actually seeing that um, Standard Charter was very fast and flexible to get these solutions integrated in our environment. 
solutions which we have uh, been using or which we are losing, uh, they work in the areas of rec tech, they work in the area of data analytics, they work in risk monitoring and in uh, progressive solutions for customer onboarding. We use this accelerator concept to engage not only within ourselves, but we actively engage with our customers. Earlier this year, uh, we had a problem statement where a customer said, well, you have nice systems out there, but we want to combine the services which you bring to us on the trade side and the foreign exchange side and want to actually make our processes even smarter and even better. So we invited them to a pop-up accelerator which was hosted in India and we derived a solution which as we speak goes into production. To be honest, it goes into a user acceptance test and the full production will be starting first quarter next year. So that's a way how we fully create end-to-end -end solutions from the customer perspective um, with the help of external companies put this in production in just a turnaround time of a little bit more than half a year. These are just, it's just one example which we are doing. Another area where I see that banking will be very, very, um, there will be another innovator in banking, this is Internet of Things. Today, when you think about it, banking is all about people still taking the decision to pay. But with billions of sensors building into, uh, put into uh, things, we can foresee the, 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 um, the fact that things are taking decisions to pay. So therefore, the decision to pay will come from the Internet of Things itself. In order to test that idea, we put sensors in a car and deployed this car or used these car sensors for making dealer financing even more uh, attractive. What we do there is we, we measure the location of the car and when the car enters the geofence of a dealer, we issue the loan and finance the car and if the car permanently exit, uh, the dealer, uh, exits the dealer fence, then the loan is due and the dealer has to pay for it. This is directly connected to the back end, so the signal to pay comes from the thing itself. No back office any longer, a fully automated solution, which is actually um, helping to make the whole process much more efficient and fluid. Let me conclude. There are actually three types of fintech companies. The one type of fintech companies are selling to banks. The second type of fintech companies are selling through banks. And the third type of fintech company wants to sell around us. So the first two categories I want you to listen. And the third category you just should also listen you should have listened to what I said before. Standard Chartered is definitely open for business. We are a large bank with a global footprint in Asia, Middle East, of Africa, working in 68 countries. We have bank licenses to reach 4 billion customers around the world. This is more than 50% of the world's population. We are a large, comp uh, large bank, but still nimble. Our decision center, our operative center is here in Singapore. Our largest market is in Hong Kong. So two very important locations for the Asian, uh, Middle Eastern and African community. And last but not least, we are, we, we have decided to go down the digital road. We have put the money where our mouth is and we are definitely very easy to do business with. So, with this I want to conclude. I thank you for your attention.